Um, now the bank holiday is nearly upon us, so we've brought in our resident drinks expert, uh -huh. aka Boozy Soup. <laughs> Susan Ball is here to expose some drinks myths first, and then to create the perfect summary cocktails for the weekend. Yeah. How are you so doing? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. So some nice things that we're going to try. Okay. Um, the first thing is that I kind of like to be a little bit of a rule breaker when it comes to drinks. And crazy. I know, crazy, mixing it up. <laughs> um, and a lot of times when we're talking about red wine, people think that it's not a summer drink because they imagine like log fires and exactly. cheese and all this kind of stuff. And it's warm. And it's warm. Yes. But with this, I've chilled this red wine. So this might be the first time you've ever tasted cold red wine. Um, but it's a really oh, lovely, yes, it is. light Just... red wine. So you can even see it by the color of it. Uh, this is a Beaujolais, it's the Louis Thank Jadot. Um, Beaujolais is light, um, a light red wine. You've got this lovely kind of um, strawberries and raspberry flavours coming through it. And it's it feels quite weird. Mm. Cold. It's just, it is if delicious. If you closed your eyes, you wouldn't even know it was red. It tastes just like it's got this kind of lovely depth of flavour that you're not expecting it's from really a red wine. It's really weird that it's cold. It's weird that it's yeah. cold. It's delicious. The cold thing. You kind of think it is delicious, it's isn't really it? Good. Yeah. And it's something that you might consider drinking then over your bank holiday weekend because you're not. It doesn't have to be warm and heavy, it can be light and refreshing yeah. and quite delicious. And can you chill all red wines? Not all red wines, but nice. what you're doing is you're looking for a red wine that is low in tannins. So any of those really big bodied, kind of the more expensive red wines, yeah. they're not going to be great when you chill them because it's going to um, show up those like the structure that's within the wine. But yeah. wines that are made with like plenty of fruit in them and have those kind of light characteristics, good ideas to check by the colour of it, but look for things like Gamay and Pinot Noir as your grape variety right shove it in the fridge and if it doesn't work then take it out and drink it later when it's warm I, I like them better cold yeah, do you yeah, yeah. I'm, like honest, I'm not quite sure now I, I yeah. love red wine because you were talking, I'm not quite sure it's cold yeah you were talking about <laughs> I came across this first in the States because I used to go to college there and live over there for a lot and it's the same thing that at, at this time of the year it's nice because they're dealing with much higher temperatures and the wines are still lovely and go really well with food but just delicious yeah. and this is a completely uneducated statement but is Red wine slightly better for you than white wine. Um, it well, it depends Slimming. really. There's more some slim. more or one a day it keeps the doctor well, away. Well, there's some you more. Wish, the mate. <laughs> you wish, mate. I like the way it's 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 apple, apple, one a day. Daniela, it's an apple. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has more because it's got more um, colour in it from the skins. There are slightly more nutrients in it, yeah. Right. And it would be depending. Dry white wine is, is is the driest you can get, so that is the least amount of sugar. But red wine right. tends to not have an awful lot of residual sugar in it, so that's why. Um, so it is why people think So the better. answer is just have an apple. <laughs> just a little bit, and the French right. do really well on a half a glass of wine at least a yes, day. Yes, at so, least. You know. And then there's another myth which I find quite interesting mm -hmm. about the, the lime in the oh in Corona, yeah. yeah, in in like you know those clear bottled beer that you get from Mexico and stuff like Corona and Sal. Yeah. Um, lots of people say that you put the lime in it to get rid of flies, that it was like a tradition. Yes. It, it isn't. It's just that limes grow plentifully in Mexico. And because it's a flavor, a beer that doesn't have an awful lot of flavor, yeah, it's pretty mm. neutral. It means that then when you put it into it, you can just taste the lime more. Yeah. So there you go. Um, I never heard that rumour though. Mythbuster. The They're all like, oh, it's there to keep the flies away. The lime does really. add to us, like, definitely. But they don't, lime is delicious and lime and beer is lovely. It's like a classic combination. It's yeah. just, okay, now stop know. teasing us. What oh, are yeah, these so you bits have, of goodness that I'm dying Yeah, I know. Try. Look, um, I put loads of herbs in it. This time of the year is just fantastic because things are growing plentifully. I have yeah. big basil plants and stuff all over my kitchen and the smell is great too. Mm -hmm. So the first one that we're going to try, it's a really simple, like with cocktails, you should be like following recipes and like doing exact measurements. Yes. But we're on our holiday. Yeah. It's the bank holiday weekend. Let's so just wing it. Let's just wing it. Yeah. And there's loads of great Irish fruit that's in season two. So I grabbed a handful of raspberries, tore up some basil, uh, threw in a splash of like simple syrup that had a little bit of elderflower in it and topped it off with soda. And that's our first one. Oh, and there's the alcohol in it, most importantly, is vodka in this one. So you're looking for something that but doesn't have I have to taste. say, that looks It looks good. Yeah. Yeah. It, it looks, looks really good. And so it's I hope kind it's delicious. Of well, it is, yeah. There's loads yeah. of raspberries on the bottom. There's loads of raspberries on the bottom. So Definitely. The treat oh, is that, yeah, and you can make this big pitcher style. You yes. can just throw things together and then you can add oh the God, ice in the glass. Nice, isn't that's it? nice. The that basil tastes like alcohol. Yeah, no, the basil is great, isn't it? Basil is one of those, it has that kind of anisidy herbiness that. Yes, and I wasn't sure about great. the basil. Yum. Yeah, that good. is delicious. I've never had a drink of basil in it. That's Yum. amazing. It's yeah. really good. You could throw some cucumber Yum. in this as well and then really pretend it was good. So for kind of healthy, so I'll leave it so there. Kind of healthy, kind of delicious. So this is a little twist on a kind of a traditional mojito. So it's 
it's got um, clear rum in it, so we're using white rum. I just threw some Bacardi in it. I also wanted to pick Cheers. drinks, Cheers. things that people have in their cupboards. And with this, the addition is ginger syrup. So oh, yeah. I made a simple mm -hmm. syrup with some ginger in it, and uh, that's a really easy thing to do. Equal parts of sugar and water together. Chop yes. your ginger up, throw it into it, that and is you delicious. and the so fresh mint and the ginger. Really okay, like pick your favorite. Pick your favorite out of the three. This. This number one. two, ah, basil. I'm going to go with number three. Basil. Excellent. Now, basil. Martin, we'll come over to you. On this, 